Hey, what's up? And thanks for joining us today for the 31 plus ways to grow your business. I'm super excited for you to be with us today. At the end of this, we're going to give you some major takeaways. Number one, find, win, and engage influencers. The process for funneling your visitors into customers, how to turn disappointed guests into raving fans, yes, it's possible, and how to get anyone, and I mean anyone, to open your emails. Okay, maybe not the president or someone that is crazy like that, but I guarantee if you use this strategy, you're going to get people to open your emails. All right, so who am I? Well, I'm the enthusiastic founder of Hatch. I'm a recognized influencer of the startup community. I've been on the TED stage, and I host a weekly business show on ABC. And honestly, I've been able to help and work with thousands of businesses start, grow, sell, fail, franchise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to take all that stuff that I have worked with them and teach it to you. And when I say work with them, sometimes it's it's growing pains and sometimes it's not fun. But you learn from that and it's going to be exciting. So why are you here? Well, maybe you're trying to start a business. Maybe you're trying to quit working for the man. Maybe you want to take an existing bis- business, the content that you have or the fans, and turn it into a juggernaut. Turn that into a monster. Maybe you're frustrated with results. That's always a real pain. Or you just don't know what to do. At the end of this, we're going to give you guys a step-by-step, or throughout this, we're going to give you a step-by-step, play-by-play, how and what exactly to do. One thing that I think is very important, though, is that no canned fruit here, no canned information here, always the freshest. Why? Because I've been on webinars before, I've taken video courses, I've been to workshops before, and oftentimes I find that the people who are providing this information have actually never done the thing themselves. And when you ask them a question, not only is it very obvious that they haven't, but also it's bad for you to be listening to these people because they haven't actually done it. They maybe read it in a book and are trying to tell you from it. I think it's very important that the people who provide the information to you have actually done it themselves. We're going to go over a series of different ways that you can grow your business, and we're going to use these eight different ways, plus a couple others, uh, including press, social reviews, testimonials, blog posts, podcasts, and a couple others. One thing, though, that I think is really good to start with, and it might be a refresher, but it might be brand new to you, so it's a bonus. I'm going to talk to you guys about how to put together a sales funnel. Now, if it's a refresher, great, pay attention, and maybe I can show you a couple of steps in here that have been instrumental in the growth of my business. So a sales funnel is the process of taking a visitor and funneling them into a customer, someone on your website, someone walking by your office, someone walking into a shopping mall and thinking about potentially buying something from your business. It doesn't matter if you're a brick and mortar. It doesn't matter if you're a service provider. It doesn't matter if you have an online business. All businesses have their visitors or their prospects go through some sort of funnel. And typically it takes five to seven positive interactions to take those visitors and turn them into actual paying customers. So knowing that, it takes a series of educational moves, it takes a series of conversations, it takes a series of steps to get those individuals to actually do what you want them to do, which is pull out that credit card, pull out that wallet, and pay you. So the first thing to do is understand that Everyone is going to go into the funnel, but not everyone's going to come out of that, and that is okay. So I'm going to show you a series of steps on things that you can do to plug into your funnel to get maximum results. The first thing, provide your visitors something for free. If you're in a shopping mall and you're at the food court, think about the Chinese stand. What are they giving you? A little General Tso's chicken. Why? Because they guess that if you can taste a little bit of it, you might buy. 
So what are they learning from you? What are they pro being provided from you? Free content can be anything from an introduction from someone, a blog post, a webinar like you're on right now, an email, a social media post, or several other things. It's about providing value. The second step, a mutual data point. It's to initiate a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you wanna connect with them. It could be a Facebook or friend request or LinkedIn, or, or if you're at a physical networking event, it could be actually exchanging a business card for another business card. But here's where it gets tricky. Over 80% of people never get to step three, which is simply just following up and providing them supplemental information. Maybe it's providing them another piece of educational material that you guys talked about at your one-on-one -on -one meeting. Maybe it's they sign up for an email opt-in on your website, and it's just making sure that you actually follow up with them. And typically, it's around a topic that you guys were talking about. Let me say this again. Over 80% of people never get to step three in the funnel. So if you can just be like the 20% and follow all the rest of these steps, you're going to be in business. Step four. Now, remember, this is just a guide to be using in your business. Step four. Dig deep. Figure out if the person that you're talking to is even a good fit. Are you trying to sell them something that they don't need? or they don't see as a pain point, what is their pain point? Simply ask them, how do you do this? I usually write an email, subject line, hey, which is my favorite thing in the world to do. And that's one of the easiest ways to get someone to open your email. It says, hey, and the subject line. And the next thing is, you know, we met, it was great. What keeps you up at night? Or what, is, what has been troubling with your business? Or something like that. Why is that important? Because you're just trying to talk with this person. You're not selling them anything. And then when they reply to you, simply analyze what they say and figure out how you can help. And if you can help, then get to step five and say, hey, I think this is a good fit. And you can do this in a series of steps by recapping everything from step one to step four. Provide maybe some more informational, uh, some more useful information, maybe some of your customers' testimonials and case studies, and show numbers where possible. So if you help someone go from one customer to 10 customers, tell them. If you help someone go from $100 to $100,000, tell them and show them how you think that what you do for business can help them as well. After you've done the hard sell, make sure you follow up within 24 hours Either way, whether they bought or they didn't, or even if they said no, make sure that you understand that everything that you are supposed to be providing them, they've gotten. Or if they haven't responded, or if they said no, figure out why they said no. If they haven't responded yet, just simply follow up and say, hey, I wanted to make sure that you got everything that I sent you. And step seven, make sure you provide them with ongoing support. Make sure that the things that you told them that you were going to provide them you're actually doing because a happy customer is an extremely valuable customer. Now, I know this might have been a, a refresher to many of you, but I think it's so important to be thinking about this while we are talking about ways to grow your business because most of the time, the people that you're communicating with are not in a shopping mood. They're not on Amazon and they're not on a shopping mall. So if you are not one of those things and you're trying to get these people to sell, you have to put them through a series of steps. And that series of steps is a sales funnel. And if you put them through the correct sales funnel, you're going to be able to gain new business. So without further ado, let's get into the next phase. Now remember, I host a TV show. I have a journalism degree and I also am the host of a podcast. So I'm constantly pitched ideas. I also have been able to get my business hatch and the hundreds of businesses or the thousands of businesses that we worked with hundreds of articles written about them. Why? I know the game and I'm going to show you exactly how to play the game over the next few slides over the next few moments. Why is this important? Because if you can play this game, you're going to get these reporters, these this press, these media outlets, whether or not they're journalists or not, you're going to be able to get these individuals to actually reach out to you and look at you as a source. Why? Because you're going to provide them a ton of value and they are going to look at you as someone that can give them the answer that they're looking for. So we're talking about creating relationships with reporters. One of the first things that you want to do is find the person on your beat. A beat is simply put a person that is continually 
reporting or writing or producing on a very similar topic over and over and over again. You want to unfollow and engage with them on social media and then reach out to them and say, hey, I love what you're writing. I just want to introduce myself and say hi, and I'm going to continue to follow you in the future and maybe even throw them a story idea or a lead, but it has nothing to do with your business. So where do you find these beats? You probably already know the people that continue to write over and over and over again. You just never thought of it this way. So here's a simple way to do it. Simply Google something local in your business community. Here's an, here's an article that popped up. But the key here is knowing that, okay, this could be a reporter that's talking about small business. It also could be a reporter that's talking about breweries. And maybe breweries is the business that you're talking about. Why is this important? Look at what we boxed out here. That is your reporter. That's who you're looking to contact. Now simply create a spreadsheet. You can do it as simply as you want, last name, first name, and then their social handles, their email, the beat maybe, and if they're national or local, because then you have a database, a directory of information that you can simply go back to whenever you have questions or the you're looking for people that you wanna contact. And here's one that's filled out that we use in our business. And this is about we're writing a book on building a small business community. And these are key influencers that we reach out to and introduce ourselves to. So we follow this exact strategy. Remember, everything that we do, we have done ourselves. So no canned information here. What about at a national level? Same thing, Google that thing from a national level. You get a HubSpot. Uh, article potentially, but the article isn't important as long as you know that the, it's the right information, the right keywords. But what's important here is Lindsay. Look at that bolded out. Remember, we're creating relationships here, not a match.com relationship, rather a relationship that you can have with someone for many, many, many years, because those many years will turn into many, many, many articles, which will turn into thousands and thousands of hits to your website or to your business. You wanna engage with them on social, but as you would with a friend, not pushing your business or your own agenda, because if you do that, they will read right through you, and this strategy will not work. You wanna let it happen organically. Look. Reporters are nosy and they're going to broach the subject themselves. It's their job to. Let's talk about a press release real quick. Something that a lot of people I think mess up. And there's some key pieces to it. The key pieces are really the who are you, what are you doing, and when are you doing, and if applicable, where. Right? You don't want to go into this blind. There's a template. There's templates that you can use. You know, we have plenty of them on 1004. But I think it's really important for you to start local with this whole press piece because you can learn from it. And what you'll learn from working with the press locally will help you from a national level. So really understanding the nuts and bolts of what is in a press release or what you'll find is that many publications have some free publicity parts where all you have to do is fill out a simple survey and you can get a ton of free publicity from it. But look, it's not about sending a specific press release. If you just send out a press release blind, what's going to happen is very simple. If you're not someone super famous, which my guess is most people, they're gonna simply take it and basically throw it away. So again, it's not about sending a press release, it's about understanding the elements and creating those relationships with those reporters so that you can send it to them. Because when they go to pitch your idea to their boss, they're gonna get behind it. So it's the what, the who, the when, the where, if possible, but why anyone should care. And here's a local one to look at where, all, look what they're looking for here. You're going to simply see that this is what they're looking for. And then they submit this news and guess what? It's free publicity, both online and in the physical paper. 
One thing that I think is super underutilized is an as seen in section on your website. This was so big from the as seen in telemarketers or the video marketers for so long, you can actually leverage this idea in your business to gain exposure and to gain expert and authority status. Because ultimately, if someone is questioning buying from you, but they see that you have been featured in these big publications or that you work with these big businesses, that mind, that psychology behind it will change. So if you had an article in Entrepreneur Magazine, simply on your website, put that logo in there and then link that icon, that logo to the article about you. Now, if you had multiple articles written about you, simply have that go to a secondary page about all the articles on Entrepreneur Magazine or entrepreneur.com and simply then write a quick description of each of them and then link it out to at a later um, from that link. So where do you do this on your website? Well, if you see, this is our website, startwithhatch.com. We put it right here. And then if you were to click Entrepreneur, what would happen? It would go to Entrepreneur, that Entrepreneur link. If you have an article that has been written about you, make sure you tell the people on your email list. All too often, people are scared about promoting their business. I was recently talking in our community for 1004, and we had an entrepreneur who was questioning if she was marketing too much. And my food for thought on this is, it's a good thing that people see you all the time not a bad thing. Now, there's a line at some point, but my guess is most people are not even close to that line. And so if you're wondering, well, how much is too much? Until people tell you, you're probably okay to keep going. At the end of this, we're going to show you an entire scheduler, which we believe is something that can help you save a ton of time. So look at this as just a schedule of social media posts. We're going to show you a couple of tools in a second, but the key is to understand that, hey, if we schedule our content out, if we schedule the things that we're talking about over the next few minutes, and we do it all the first day of the month or some day of the month or every few months, we're going to be saving so much time rather than waiting for that specific date to come. So if it's Saturday at two o'clock, oh, I need to make sure I, I go onto social media and do it, but if you used a tool like Hootsuite Buffer Meet Edgar, it can save you hundreds of hours a year. And so what you'll see is we're just gonna simply say, okay, when you have press, put it on these specific days. This, this is a guide for you, this is a template for you. At, at the end of this, we're gonna have this entire thing filled up. If you wanna mix and match it a little bit differently, that's completely cool for you. If you, wanna, uh, if you wanna do this, all you have to do is simply get out a piece of paper and create a grid. You could also do it from a spreadsheet, Excel, it doesn't matter. The key is that you actually schedule it. These are a couple of our favorite tools. We've used all three and we're currently using Meet Edgar and all of them are a couple of bucks a month. So this is simply kind of the way it looks like. So we host a podcast. It's called The 1004 Show. And simply, these are the dates that we're pushing out that content. Why? Because we have, you know, at the we have a lot of episodes shot. And we want to make sure that we're constantly pushing it, not just when that episode went live. Why? Because only so many people are seeing you at any given time and that you need to constantly be recycling that information for more people to be seeing you. The more people that see you, the more likely you are to put them through from being visitors to becoming customers. At the end of every email, you have a ton of white space, but it's underutilized. It's not used at all. So what could you do to add a call to action or something into your email signature? So when, when we were in Entrepreneur Magazine, all I did was, here's my name. And at the end of it, did you see us in Entrepreneur Magazine? And that would be linked to that article. People would email me back and say, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And sometimes it's, hey, are we friends on LinkedIn? Or are we, are, have you checked out our new podcast yet? These are just great ways for you to be leveraging white space that people are already looking at. And dozens of people every week reach out to me and say, oh, I hadn't, 
I hadn't thought about that or, or actually respond to whatever that call to action is. And it's a great way for you to just constantly be pushing whatever you're working on. So when you are not Entrepreneur Magazine or whatever publication or any media that you're in, it's going to be take an image of that and make it your Facebook or Twitter cover photos. Once you have it posted, make sure to just add to the description and to link to it. But it's just another great way for you to promo your business. Now, everything that we just talked about is really about a long-term strategy while trying to acquire new business through the help of the media. This next thing will also help you get business from the media, but it's really about the right now. And it's a tool called Haro. It's a tool that you can go to at helpareporter.com. That's the website right there. And it simply connects reporters with people in specialized fields to be featured in a mutually beneficial way. They need content and leads and you need exposure. Now look, everything that we taught you before is very important, but these reporters that you're going to see on Haro need the information now. So you don't need to beat around the bush. You need to provide them what they're looking for. And we'll go a little bit deeper now. So here's Haro. You're likely a source, and Haro provides journalists with a robust database of sources for upcoming stories and daily opportunities for sources to secure valuable media coverage. We've probably gotten dozens, maybe even maybe even a hundred articles um, produced by us because of using Haro, and it's a free tool. You simply sign up, and a couple of times a day, you'll get an email. And then these reporters are looking for people that are experts on these topics. If one of them rings a bell or looks like you, you simply click it and then you email this group and say, hey, just like you do with the press release, here is what I'm thinking. Here is why I'm the expert. Here's here's my quote. Now, you don't always get when you submit, but if you spend a little bit of time every day or every week doing this, several of them will become content and you'll be able to get free exposure. Now that's it for the first step. Let's talk about the next step, which is existing work. So let's say you've been in business for a while. Maybe you're a service provider, an agency where you're producing a lot of business for people, or maybe you're a product company. Constantly, I believe that you should be constantly promoting yourself through the work that you do. Why? Because like we said in step one, if you're not telling the world what you're doing, no one's going to know about it. So you have to be that marketing arm. You have to be thinking about promo. So as you're building your product, simply tell people what you're building. You don't have to go into the super ins and outs of it, but if you have a new feature out, let the world know. If you've been working with a specific business, let that let the world know what you've been doing. Create a portfolio page that includes all of the work that you've done. You want to include what the company does, what you did for them, how it helped, and use numbers whenever possible. When I say use numbers, I think it's important that if you can tell a story around the numbers and how you've helped someone, it's just it's just a very, very compelling piece. So here's an image-based agency portfolio page of showing how the work that they've done can share that story. Our good friends at Array Digital do this and they promote now constantly but they do this by scheduling out the social posts. So their marketing director simply says, okay, we have 200 clients. Over the next few months, we're gonna feature you know, dozens of them through this strategy by saying, this is what we did for them, this is where they were before, and this is how we can help you. And it's a really great way to become a feeder into your business. If you get a new client, just like we were talking about with the free publicity, the free publicity through the press release, simply push it out there. As you'll see, a lot of this is all about just constantly pushing. A couple months ago, I was taking one of our clients through Kenya Williams. He owns a auto detailing shop in Williamsburg, Virginia. And he said, Zach, you know, I see you guys everywhere. I don't understand how you do it. And I simply said to Kenya, you know, watch this. And by the end of it, I think you'll have a good idea. And what he said was, wow, now I understand. And after taking this exact piece of content that you guys are, are, are on right now, he got press within three days by just following the strategy of free publicity. There are people, there are businesses, there are media outlets that are looking for 
work. They're looking for stories and they don't know where to find it. And if you can be proactive, you can get your business out there. And I think within the first day, he actually gotten two new clients from it as well. So you are driving and you get behind a car and you see that the person bought the car from CarMax or car lots or something Ford or Honda. I drive a Jeep, so maybe something Jeep. That's free publicity for wherever they bought that from the dealership. How could you do that on your website? I call it the license plate method, where you're simply taking your branding and placing it on a customer's website. So we reached out to 8020 and said, hey, we've helped you get to seven figures in business. Is there any way that you can put our logo and link, our branding on your website? The answer was simply yes. And here it is, the exact same thing that you see on those cars with the license plates, with the promotions, but on a website. The next two sections I do not want you to be confused at because I believe they're very different things. Testimonials and social reviews. A testimonial is something that you can be proactive with. A social review is something that you can still be proactive with, but you can't control what people will review and rate about your business, where with a testimonial, you can't. So these are all customers. These are all raving fans of my business. Jeannie, Nate, Xerxes, Jeremy, I got them to tell me how we help them and now we promote it. It's a great way for other people who might look like, might be interested in buying from you to say, hey, all right, this person looks like me or they have a similar business. I believe that whatever my business is can be helped by them. And so it's a huge way to get over the hump with prospects. So how does this look on your website? Well, here's three examples right here of testimonials on a business website. I believe that testimonials are a great way for you to promote your business through other people's eyes. When you're doing a testimonial though, I think it's very imperative to not just promote the big businesses that you work with or your biggest customers. Why do I think this is important? Because if someone comes to your website and they are looking for, or let's put it this way. Let's say you put that, oh, you worked with Walmart and Walmart is the biggest company in the world, but you only did a very small project with Walmart and the most, the majority of your businesses are small what's going to happen is they're going to see that you appear to not work with smaller businesses, even though it's the majority. So you want to get testimonials from companies of, of all different sizes and styles because you want to appeal to everyone. And I'm going to show you a couple of hacks to do this in a second. Look, here's a way that HubSpot or here's a way that Lead Pages does it with HubSpot. Here's another one with Sonia, who's the director of human resources. Now look at this. You got marketing automation specialist. This is a hack you're about to see. Director of human resources, right? Ah, account manager, right? The key here is to figure out what the title of these people is and start promoting that. Because if you find that you have a trend in who keeps buying from you, you can start to tailor your article around those type of people. So you see there, account manager. Before it would have been director of human resources or marketing automation specialist. So if you find a trend in your business that you're constantly talking to the same people, use those testimonials or reach out to people to be those testimonials because your target customers will be looking for it. Once you get testimonials, simply schedule it out. This scheduler is getting pretty filled. So when you're promoting this, you can use a tool like Fiverr.com or Canva.com to create or use your in-house graphics if you have a, someone on your team to do that and create a simple graphic to share in the post because you wanna promote engagement. You wanna tag that person in the company and hopefully they'll share in their channels and grant you more exposure. A lot of times, if you've been on someone's 
podcast or if you've done an article about them, they'll actually pull out specific testimonials or quotes, turn into graphics, and then send them to that person too to promote as well. It's just a great way for you to be very proactive in trying to get these individuals or these businesses to promote you as well. And again, once you get testimonials, push it out to those free publicity channels as well. So how exactly could you get a testimonial from someone? Here's a script that you could use. Hey, client. It's been a blast working with you and seeing your product or service grow, seeing your business grow. We'd love to feature you on our site and throughout our channels. Can you provide a sentence or two about the experience you have with us? That's it. We'll do the rest of the work. Thanks, name. And so the the subject line could be testimonial, hey, anything like that, and I guarantee you they'll open the email. One challenge with this, though, is that the amount of time it can take to get the answer so even if they're super satisfied with you, I have found that it can be difficult for people to give you this answer because they don't know exactly what to say. So on your calls with them, through your text messages or emails, if they're saying something that's really positive about your business, write it down. And then when the time is right, go back to them and say, hey, you said this about my business. Are you cool with us using it as a testimonial? I've done this dozens of times. They've never said no. And it's much easier for them to just say yes, or they can tweak it a little bit. Now, we talked about testimonials, how you can be very proactive with that. With social view reviews, you really can't because people will say what they want about you and you really don't have a lot of control. Here's a couple of reviews of my business right here. We do have good reviews. One other thing to be thinking about, though, with social reviews is when you can, which should be always, say something back because social is a two-way street. And as you can see here with Jason on the right, we responded because he did something that can help our business. And if we don't respond and we just leave that open, we're just wasting our time even being on those channels. So on social media, it's a two-way street, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you respond. One of my favorite stories to tell is the one star story where I was, and I do this quite often, I go through our ratings and reviews and I make sure that everything's going well, once a week I would say. And I once found that we had a one star and I looked and the person who it was, I didn't know, I looked through our database and our CRM and had an attendant event, wasn't a member, wasn't a customer and really didn't know who they were. So I reached out and said, hey, as the owner of this business, I see that you rated us a one star. I'm really, really, really sorry that you had a negative experience. I'm really sorry and I want to make it better. Is there any, can you tell me what happened? Is there anything that I can do to make it better? And a day or so goes by and nothing crickets. But then I get a response and the person says, I have no idea who you are or your business. And I'm sorry that you got a one star. I didn't give it to you. And if I did, it was unintentional. I'm so sorry. I'll delete it. The moral of this story is positive or negative, you should always be finding out why people are ranking and rating your system. There wasn't any words associated with this. It was just a simple one star. But had I not been proactive in reaching out to this person, this one star would still be here today. And to be honest, this one star just like this has happened in a very similar scenario four or five times now where all that happens is that people somehow accidentally rate your business. So just be cautious about this and make sure that you are proactive with the people who are rating and ranking your business. Good or bad, this, imp this information will provide useful insight into what you're doing well and what you could be doing better. You could also incentivize people to write a review with some sort of value exchange in there. I don't prefer those because I feel like you're not necessarily getting people who are actually your customers. They're just trying to win the iPad or the free mail or something like that. So how do you get a social review? Very similar to the one before. Hey, client or fans, we love you and we love being able to help you. We're working on increasing our exposure on Facebook or whatever social you're on and would love if you could go to this link, obviously link it, and provide a review of our company. It would mean the world to us. Thank you so much for your help. Thanks in your name. You probably heard the term evergreen content. Now, evergreen content is content that basically never changes. It's ever, uh, 
constantly relevant. And it's the stuff when you hear about SEO, search engine, search engine optimization, evergreen content is the content that 12 years ago or 12 minutes ago is still going to be relevant today. And if you can produce evergreen content, you could be in for a very positive interaction to your business. Here's a couple that we can talk about. Podcast. Podcast are a great example, typically, of evergreen content. Why? Because you interview someone, and it's not really time-sensitive, so it's perpetually relevant. So if possible, you want to take the podcast that you are on and host that on your own website, because then you can use that website, that podcast, that interview, and promote it on your own website so that you get the wins from it. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is go and get the embed code or all you could do is promote it through the actual link as well. If you can't do this, just take the link to where it's hosted and create a post on your site talking about the experience on the podcast and then link back out to that podcast. But again, it's you being able to control your marketing instead of waiting for someone. Many podcasts are once a week or every day. And so if they only promote that hard during that time for the first few days, what do you do for the rest of the time? Don't say nothing. You take control and promote it yourself. So you could simply take the link and create a post and embed it into your site, like several of these on the 1004 show, and schedule out your social posts. We use Meet Edgar. I literally just did this a couple of days ago where I got went through and I added several, I think three to six posts for every podcast that we did so that it will recycle and recycle and recycle over and over and over again. Why is this important? Because it's kind of like the rotisserie chicken way back when you set it and you forget it. Now, obviously, you don't forget it. You want to engage with people that are promoting and talking and retweeting and commenting, but from the actual pushing of the content, it's good to go almost forever. Something that I call the fraternity of podcast guests is when you find other talks from the same podcast and reach out to those people. Meaning if you are on a podcast with someone else, you can create a relationship with them and who knows what will happen. Maybe you can make new friends, share their stories, and maybe they'll reciprocate. It's just a great way for you to connect where you have something mutually beneficial, where you have something that's mutually connecting. It's the fraternity. It's the alumni from your school. It's just a great way for you to have an in with something where you didn't know that you had it before. So maybe I was on this podcast. This is our podcast. Maybe Gary Plague was on, and I'd be like, hey, Gary. I look him up, I find him, find this website, and I go, hey, Gary, I listened to your website on that podcast. It would be the 1004 show in this case. I wanted to tell you how awesome you are. I dug into some of your other work and uh, some of the other work you're doing, and I love it. I was on that podcast too. You can find it here. I'm glad I discovered you on that podcast. I'll start sharing your work. You're basically stroking this person's ego, and they're like, oh my God, this is great. I'm so happy that someone liked what I had to say, and you're creating a relationship with them, a friend with them. Now, where it says that podcast, just simply change that for whatever the podcast was. A lot of people talk about blog posts and writing them and and what's important in there. All that is important. I'm not going to teach you how to write a blog post here or what you should be writing about. I'm going to talk about ways that you can increase the exposure of those blog posts. A tool that I like to use is called Discuss. It's a actually a commenting system, but what's cool about it is at the bottom of every blog post, They try and keep people on your website by promoting popular posts. So you can either download this tool, Discuss, or you can simply take your most popular post and write a quick headline and then link that post so that the individuals, the visitors that are on your site will stay on your site for a longer period of time. And if they stay on your site for a longer period of time, they're more likely to engage with you and go through those next steps of your funnel. After every email, or excuse me, after every blog post that you write, you should email your list. The same goes for the podcast that you produce. Simply email your list and let them know that a new piece of content is available. Maybe you've heard of guest blog posts. This is a template by my good friend, Danny Rubin. You can learn about him at dannyhrubin.com, but he's going to teach us over the next few slides how to 
get your information, your article on an influencer's website by simply following this template where it says, hi, the person who runs the site, my name is, and I write the blog and it's one line about your website and why it matters. For instance, news to live by, which highlights the career advice hidden in the headlines. I hope you're doing well. You can use this exact strategy, this exact template. I'm a big fan of the site where you want to guest post and read your content all the time. I especially like reference and then reference to recent posts you find worthwhile and link to them. For instance, your post on email templates for building relationships and how to tell stories during an interview. Then, one more compliment that leads into your pitch. For instance, I like news to live by because the advice is practical and I have similar content and I think your audience will appreciate it. I wrote a blog post recently called, and whenever that headline is, and in a nutshell, it's, and tell me what it's about. I would be happy to send it over as a guest post if you'd like. Here's also a couple other posts I've written and then link them. If you have other ideas, I'm open to writing something else. The site where you want to guest blog post. Thanks. I hope to hear from you and sign it. And here's Danny right here. And he has tons of templates on his site, dannyhrubin.com. So do that. And then schedule her again. You know, this schedule is so important because if you do it, it's done. We talked about in the first step how to get interviews, how to get press, how to get media mentions. Well, once you get it, make sure that you're promoting it. So a few years ago, I interviewed Damon John of FUBU and Shark Tank. And that was a big name. Why would I want to promote that? Because Damon has authority status that I don't. So if I can leverage his name to help mine, Yahtzee. So if the interview's evergreen, which Damon's is, email my list and let them know about it. Let them know that, hey, I interviewed this rock star named Damon John. And schedule it on our social post. You can do this in a series of different ways, just through blog posts, interviews, etc., but if it's not evergreen, think about it as TBT. So maybe it's Thursday. You can throw back Thursday to that post. Heck, you could probably even do it every Thursday. But you want to push it as if you're an expert in whatever the subject matter is. And what do you know? The schedule is completely filled. And finally, how do you get people to opt in into your website? It's typically an email. And is it's an exchange of some piece of content for contact information on your users. You want to be concise, be authoritative, use big wins, and use real numbers when possible. So this one isn't very good. Learn something new. What does that even mean? Or constantly researching and learning about the freshest methods and techniques in business. Now you can too. It's just not very specific. But like this one at okdork.com, you get access to 85% of my business hacks. Wow, I know exactly what I'm getting. Tremendous. Over the last few moments, we have, in review, taught you how to find, win, and engage influencers through press, existing work, testimonials, opt-ins, social reviews, interviews, blog posts, and podcasts. We also showed you the process for funneling visitors into customers through free content, a mutual data point, supplemental information, the dig deep method, the hard sell, the 24-hour follow-up and ongoing support, and showed you how to turn disappointing guests into raving fans, and how to get anyone to open your emails. Again, use that subject line. Hey, it's the best one I've ever thought about and used, and it works every time. I want to tell you guys about a couple of people who have used these methods, though, and how they've exactly used them for their business. Let's talk about Eric. Eric's an agency owner, and a few years ago, he came to me and said, Hey, Zach, um, I have a decent business right now, but I just found out that because we're a government contract business, I'm losing my contract. And basically, if I cannot find another contract, I'm going to go out of business. And Eric honestly just decided that he didn't want to be in the contract business anymore. So he didn't know what to do. So he decided that... He needed to do something. And so he found one of our 1004 systems that he could use to generate leads. And it's very simple. We advised him to take the inventory of everyone in his life and categorize them into three categories. Cold, warm, and hot. 
The cold are the people that you know you'll never get business with. Hot are the people that you know can be your customers today. And warm is kind of anyone in between. And I remember talking to Eric and I said, you know, you, you're lucky you have a couple of weeks before this contract goes under. And he was like, yeah, I, I, if I didn't know this, I would, you know, have to let my family of, of four down. And I don't know that I could do that. So Eric looked and found all those hot leads and he pitched them his business. And he simply said, hey, I want to let you know that I'm open for business. This is what we do. And this is how we can help you. And sure enough, plenty of them were in need with his services. I remember he got his first one for about 10 grand. Then he got a second one for 50 grand and has now done several six-figure projects now. And his team, I believe, is up to 13 or 14 and well over seven figures in annual business. But he started with a simple concept of saying, who's actually going to be my customer right now and focusing on them. All he had to do was narrow his sights and ask. Now, as a business owner, I actually think all too often we're focusing on the colds, not the hots. So the more hots that we think about, the more likely we are to gain them from business rather than those on the cold side who are probably never going to get our business. It was a simple change in approach. Then there's Nate. Nate was a maker. Nate is a maker. And he had an idea because he was a swim coach at a large major state university. He saw that the time clocks that these swimmers had to use to swim, to pace themselves, were very outdated. They were, they're very cumbersome. They were very difficult. And they were kind of like those universal remotes that no one understands how to configure. And Nate said, I think that I can make a business off of selling swim clocks, but he was going to do it through a Kickstarter campaign and just didn't know what to do. He was overwhelmed and wary about where to start. And honestly, it was do or die. If he couldn't raise the 30,000 or so, he wouldn't be able to go into business. So he joined 1004 for help. He hit his goal, which is great. What's even better is that our community was able to help him decide what types of content were most effective for him, what platforms to share it on, when to do it, and helped him navigate the process and much, much more. And as you can see there, he was trying to get just under 40K and made just under 65K in just 28 days. Nate never could have done this without us. He said, I was able to get honest criticism and feedback by surrounding him by being surrounded by entrepreneurs and business owners who can understand the struggles I was going through. He never, I would have never been able to do this without 1004. Then there's Tracy, the story of a a lady who had seen a couple other companies that she was high up on go from nothing to something, but she wasn't an owner. And so she helped these two other, two or three other businesses become millionaires. And she said, man, I can do this myself. But she was lost. So she started this blue collar service business because she'd helped done it before, but she felt lost and she was alone in the vast world of business. Now she's very experienced in this industry, but not from the business side of it. And without a huge marketing budget to advertise her company, Tracy didn't know how to grow her business. So she joined 1004 for the network and community. And When we first met her, she was doing about $60,000 a year. Now, just 18 months later, well over $1 million in revenue and has over 40 employees. And according to her, she's no longer in the startup phase. She says, if you have a small business and you're looking to make it bigger, you're looking to make it better, then start with Hatch. There's nothing better than saying you're moving out of the startup phase. And it all started with me being an entrepreneur who met another entrepreneur and said, Hey, we have a path for you. And for 30 bucks a month, it was the best purchase I could possibly have made. That was Tracy. 1004 membership includes an on-demand access to our resource library, a community of other business owners, answers to your business problems, all on demand, all 24 seven, a mastermind group and support along your entire business journey. Let me say that again. 1004 membership includes an on-demand access to our resource library, a community of other business owners, answers to your business problems, a mastermind group, support and support along your entire business journey. And if you want access to 1004, you can request access 
at this link, startwithhatch.com forward slash request. Again, to request access to 1004, you can go to startwithhatch.com forward slash request. You get the on-demand library of expert workshops, things like cash flow management, how to get a product to market, how to use Kickstarter to crowdfund an idea, email marketing, and what I learned in selling my business, that and hundreds more. This is Chip Dodd. He has a business that made $10 million last year, and he teaches business owners what he learned while doing that. And Chip's just one of our experts in our library of expert workshops. He's a member of EO, Entrepreneurs Organization. We also have accredited investors. We also have tip top experts who are lawyers and accountants and service providers that can help you where you're struggling in your business all for just 30 bucks a month. You get worksheets, templates, and resource guides so that you can know ex the exact steps to go through on your business. Oh yeah, and by the way, you also get the emotional support because it's hard to talk to your significant other or your mom when times are tough or even when times are going good about your business because the people you want to talk to are people that have actually lived it themselves. And that's what the community of business owners is where how do I make these decisions when I don't know what to do and I don't know who to talk to because no one else around me is a business owner. And if you want access to 1004, you can request access at this link, startwithhatch.com forward slash request. Again, to request access to 1004, you can go to startwithhatch.com forward slash request. And that will get the ball rolling. If you are interested, all you have to do is go to that link. Thank you guys so much for your time today on this webinar. I look forward to seeing you on the inside.